Hey, happy Tuesday, everybody. Today I'm gonna show you a bit of a garden tour. It's gonna be longer than the Instagram live that I did yesterday. Today I'm prepared. I have all the bug spray on, so I'm not gonna get harassed by mosquitoes. Uh, what you just saw was my rock and double raspberry and one of my figs I've had for nine years. Both are putting out fruit that are starting to ripen. It's been really good this week, um, but I am hoping I get enough where I can keep it because I would love to make some jam. What you can see here are my white Carolina strawberries. And here are my seascape other bearing. And it looks like we have a ripe one right here. It's a treat. I think it's that one. These have been really good. Very, very good. The runners haven't been as prolific as with the White Carolinas, but I've been letting them put out fruit. Let's see the flowers on this. Just amazing. This is my first successful attempt at growing a strawberry, so I've been really happy with these. Here amongst the grass that really needs to get mowed is a thornless blackberry. I'm not sure their variety. It's really good. Let's see if I can do this and have the sun cooperate with me because it's right back there. So here I'm in the garden. You can see the owl, which was left by the previous owners, keeping watch. I want to show you this. I've been collecting dill seed, which has been awesome. Uh, it's really good for flavoring and for growing more dill next year. So I'm looking forward to that. This is a late flat Dutch cabbage. As you can see, I've been taking very good care of it, but it's starting to farm ahead. Another one here. This is a DeJesse cauliflower that I'm still very hopeful they put out a cauliflower. We'll see. It's been in there for a month, so it's a gamble. And the rest of this is kohlrabi and okra. This is the rest of my crimson spineless okra seeds. Let's see if we get any before we get our killing frost come through. What else do we have? This is Brussels sprouts and some radishes. Debatable about if we'll get some Brussels sprouts. Honestly, brassicas and onions are probably my two worst ones to try to grow. I have gotten carrots before. I know I said in a previous video I had trouble getting carrots, but I have gotten carrots. But None of these just yet. I'm hopeful though. I'm gonna have to go and visit the chickens because they're being very loud. Like, like very loud. All right, well that visit went well. Hey girl. Look at him go. That's meatball in the foreground here. As of yesterday, we've started to get five eggs, which is exciting. I love this part of the yard. It's the dampest part of the yard. It's just full of moths and insects. They've clearly gone away from here today. 
I've become very interested in pawpaws. No, I've never had one before. I've had it described to me as like a cross between a mango and banana. And I'm excited. So this one's a Potomac. And it's doing the exact same thing my Shenandoah did. It's only been in the ground for about a week or so. So it's going to take a minute. I expect in the next two weeks, though, it's going to start putting out new foliage. And get ready for winter. So I'll take you over here. I'm a Shenandoah pawpaw. They're about 10 feet apart from each other. This is the perfect understory area. They'll get bigger under here. And by the time they get to full height, they'll be in the sun. Now this has been in the ground for about a month and it just looks amazing. Looked exactly the same. It just had two really sad leaves on it. We had a bunch of Japanese beetles come through. That's why it looks a little bit beat up, but I am very excited. This one did flower this year. Obviously, it didn't have anything to pollinate it. Maybe next year. This plant is two or three years old. There we go. Out and about. We don't have foxes. Let me get the straggler. I gotta keep an eye out. I ended up in front of the house the other day. Alright. You can see these three beauties. One, two, three. Where are they? Snowbank white blackberry. These have like quadrupled, if not more, in size. So they're putting on growth this year. So we should get berries next year. Two larger ones. Uh, I think they're Kiowa blackberries. These are regular blackberries. Alright. Kiowa blackberry. Yeah. These two have been doing good. This one, not so much. This one decided to make a berry. cherries coming in next to my asparagus I can use some more mulch. I have two kinds of asparagus. I have a Jersey Giant I believe. What is it? Jersey Knight. Okay. I gotta write that again. Um, I also have a purple one here in the front. Oh. One. Hi Clyde. What's up, dear? Oh, hi. What's up, Fletcher? Yeah, only uh, two of my purple ones. Now you're not supposed to plant them this close together, but I'm not really an asparagus person, so. Let's get this back for this. There you go. See what happens? Let me get. Let me get these birds. Oh, finally. I like to go up this whole strip that's over there. I won't show you the whole thing. I really gotta put a fence in. But we're learning. I've never had chickens before. I think they're fantastic. But they are industrious. I'm giving that. Alright, well I have them distracted. I'm going to go on ahead and get me fall out of my pollinator kiwi. Come on, dear. 
Thank you. I have two hardy hues. This one is the male pollinator. We just put up some metal wires for them to grow on. So I had it recommended to me to let it grow up that. And then at the end of the winter to clean up all these extra ones. Over here. Let's see my moon and stars. Watermelon vine. I don't have any watermelons yet. You can see here an area that also needs some mulch. This is my female. It is an Anna's summer. See if I can find the no things here. Hello Clyde. You're up my butt today. Yeah. Oh, there is. Yeah, it's an Anna's. Same thing. Let it grow. Oh. So we need to train this to go along the vine. I'm excited. I had these for the first time this year. Um, after I already planted these, these actually went in. They were probably five inches tall. They went in last winter and they're still alive. That's good. good chickens. So those are those two. And now we made a complete circle. This is the thornless blackberry good. And that is my 20 by 40 garden area. Honestly, they're such rascals. Let's go in here. Maybe they'll follow me in. They did that last week. This fence my husband and I built. We're obviously not builders, but it works. We didn't build anything permanent on our property, so whenever we install the house, someone can come and change it. We figured we're either destroying our property value or making it go up, but we're full in right now. Got some carrots. These are generic orange carrots. They're doing pretty good. And here we have purple Vienna and white. Uh, delicacy white kohlrabi. You can see on the far end there, and there are two panels which survived. They're doing all right. They look good. I had all my garlic in here, 176. Next year I think I'll do just like 150 or something, maybe 130 for this six by three bed. So they're a bit small. I don't know if it was space-wise or because it needed some fertilizer, I'm gonna do some research. So I'm optimistic. And I think so I had potatoes. One, two, three. The last video saw me pick that. Here I got all my onions. There's a little squash coming up. Um, I honestly think I'll just bump it over from here to there. Put some garlic in. They're all? I got three. I'm gonna get Clyde out of here. All right, one, two, three. One, two, three. Those three aren't as much of troublemakers as these three, so I prefer to have these ones in the garden with me. I don't know what this is. I forget if it's a cocozelle or a patty pan. I actually sewed a bunch of squash here and only one came up. Let's see. There you go. That one's definitely a patty pan because I transplanted that and I think the other one died. So, got a couple squash. Hope the girls have their fun over there. I don't care if they dig up those beds. They're, they're done for the year. Hi. So I'm in my pepper forest now. They're doing amazing. I just said how much smoked bread did I have on? They're still eating me. It's okay. Look at these scotch bonnet. Isn't that beautiful? I have some fatalities coming in off screen. Oh, it's like it gave up this one. This is still going to be very spicy, so I'm going to take that. I have some beets growing in here too, which are doing okay. They're actually thriving more than the beets I planted earlier this year. I don't know if you can see them on that side. Ooh, that side. Show you what else we yeah. have. Lemon drop peppers. 
think I see a ripe one under here. Yeah. Look. Look how yellow that is. Oh, let's get the leaf out of the way. Look how yellow that is. That is just beautiful. And these are very, very spicy. It's put on some hot sauce. They look amazing. I think the best ones over here are the cherry peppers. We've been getting those nonstop. They have a really tall one up here. Another tall one here. So if I'm standing next to it over five feet, this is like three feet. Looks really good. Behind it, I have Tabasco going. Let's see if we can get a zoom. There we go. Oh, Tabasco coming in. It's not ready yet. It's taking a while. But we are going to get a ton. Absolutely. <gasps> no way! No way! Look at that! Oh my goodness! Look at all the scotch bonnets! That looks awesome! That looks so good. I'm definitely gonna come through and pick these. Oh, look, we got the whole squad. Just busy at work. Under the rattlesnake beam. See some hanging up there. All right, girls, have fun. <laughs> All right, this bed behind me I can't show you that much in because there is a yellow jacket nest underneath it, and we've gone through two cans of spray, and they're not dead, so I don't really know what to do at this point, and set for a wait for them to leave. From what I understand, they might leave over the winter, but like. Got a lot of stuff back there I gotta get. So, hoping they leave. I don't know, I could just reach over, but they are a pain. Everything in this bed is great though. Also prolific. In the back here I have nasturtiums, giant marigold, atomic starfish, which if I remember, there's a couple under there just starting to turn color. They'll turn bright, bright red. These are so good. I would I'd say they're like a cross between a habanero and a scotch bonnet. I think they're really tasty. I have a bunch of serranos. I have a, I think it's called an Alaska Light nasturtium, which is these gorgeous variegated leaves. Let's see a ripe serrano right here. Looks awesome. These have also been good. We got more Tabasco. We have last year I saved some sweet peppers from the story. You can see there's a ripe one. But they're all coming in. They're small. They look like jalapenos. But they're sweet. Also some Alaska. No, excuse me. Aloha peppers, which are like a red and yellow bell. Those are coming in, and another <laughs> giant marigold. Now in this bed over here, I have Casper eggplant and Black Beauty eggplant. I like the Caspers because they have a almost like a mushroomy flavor. We will see. Let's see if it focuses. There you go. That is a potato beetle. And typically, they eat potato leaves, but they will eat any other nightshade. Oh, it's gone. I've been picking a bunch of eggplants, so that's why you don't see that many. And again, my just awesome, awesome sesame. So I can get this stuff. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah, like I said in my live yesterday, you just let these grow and grow and grow and eventually the husks will dry and then you can take the sesame seeds out. Right. Here I have my tomatoes which I pruned back pretty heavily due to blight coming in. I have to spray them but there's a lot that are ripening. 
you ever need to uh, get your tomatoes to ripen pretty fast, actually, that's a good trick. So one trick is if you find the very end of the top and just snip it, cut it off. You can also do a heavy pruning, um, like I did here, and they'll ripen, as you can see. No, they'll be fine. This is going to refoliate within a week or so. I just did this over the weekend. It's been like two days. But it'll come back. This year, I am growing a black seaman. The Cherokee purple. Which I think is a ripe one under there. Yep. And then here I have an orange jubilee. This is a Sicilian saucer. This is a homestead, but I think it was mislabeled because there's supposed to be beefsteaks, and that's not. Over here I have garden peach. You can see here it's starting to ripen. I have... what else? San Marzano's. This one is a Mr. Stripey, and I think this is the first actual Mr. Stripey I'm getting. It's the late bloomer. It's another one we're putting over here. And some black crims, which I have been getting. And black crims are so, so flavorful. I have some black beauties and blue beauty seeds um, coming in for next year. So I'm excited for that. This is my second round of sugar snap peas. Don't remember what I planted. They might be super sugar snacks. Also have cilantro under here. Some more cucumbers. Cilantro over there too. Gotta do a little bit of weeding. And again, my sugar snap peas. Which, they're starting to come in. That's awesome. I planted that like, I don't know, beginning of August. I'll tell you who really likes it. These, these animals. Okay, in this bed I have just a whole mix of stuff. This bed is just totally hit or miss. There's like a rutabaga in there, some carrots and kohlrabi. This whole back section is my last sowing of green beans, and these are bush beans, jade bush beans, the whole thing. They're coming in, they're not ready to start picking yet, but they taste really good and they grow in really well, so I'm excited. This back part, I have lavender, a variety of patty pan, zucchini, the other squashes that aren't doing super well. This is also a marigold. My kale has really made a comeback. It's looking so good. I have a few different kinds here. I'll zoom back out. So those are ready for me to start picking. I love when they get taller because they look like palm trees. I believe I have a cosmos in the back. Let's see. Over here, I have some radishes, carrots. Lemon balm, catnip. Okra. This okra looks amazing. Look at that thing. It looks really, really good. Oh, I have a Clyde. I'm growing Clydes this year. This is where I took some beans. I see some. Made a comeback. And here I have two big plant parsley, which survived the entire summer. It's not bitter at all. It's a chamomile. And that's really it right now. Got potatoes out. I have some dragon fruit. Loquat. Meyer lemon. Cherimoya. Panachi tiger fig. Canepa, Arabica coffee, Barbados cherry. This is a, oh, I know this one. Oh, it's a Chicago hardy. Clementine, two Eureka lemons. Uh, 
Meyer lemon for my grandma. I have a ponderosa lemon. Green olive. Uh, I don't know if you can see over there. Over here I have a Texas Everbearing. Here I have a, a Violet du Bordeaux. Nagami kumquat with a Petite Negra fig. Ruby Supreme Guava. Three, um, I forget what the, it begins with an S. The three purple Jabos, Jabota Cabas. And a green finger lime. And I'm missing a couple. Forgetting something. I might have put them in the ground. Oh yeah, Fuyu persimmon and my bananas. So I'll leave those girls to mess around in the potatoes. I'm gonna go with the three over here that are destroying everything. So you turn around to talk for a couple minutes. They're getting everything. It's my own fault for not fencing it off. But they didn't get into so much of the food. It's not just this. These are all rashes. <laughs> They've been through this before. They're fine. There wasn't anything here except some cucumbers that didn't come up. And some sad lettuce, but I have a lot better lettuce on my porch. Goodness. Here we go. And I planted some coquazelles around the rim here. So those are coming in. I am so sweaty right <laughs> now. I think I got a bug bite under my eye. That's okay. I'm gonna go and check for eggs right now. And I think we should have a bunch. All right, aside from the coop that needs to get cleaned, it looks like Meatball's taking a break today. That is definitely a Clyde egg. Then my three ISA browns are also laying. So I'm gonna take these with me. <laughs> Just following you. Thank you. And now they're all back in. Do, do you want to say goodbye? <laughs> Here, help me get the chickens. <laughs> Alright, we got the girls back in. This is their very fancy run we made for them with their tractor supply coop. Judge me. We're going to do some fix in here. But it's good for now. It's mostly hardware mesh along the outside, which flips outwards and has railroad spikes that go down and also around the frame so this doesn't fly away in the wind. This is actually the least windy part of our yard. In the winter, just rushes over this fence. So these trees are good cover. For the garden, but that's some work. Moving on, I have mountain yellow sweet, banana melon, sugar baby watermelon, honeydew melon, and my kukuzi. Just still haven't decided if I want to pick this at this stage or not. Although I'd rather eat it than letting the snails get to it, which they evidently have started. Have some really sad looking cucumbers, lemon cucumber, pickling cucumber, uh, whatever it is, like eight straight, I forget what it's called. I have a clarinet squash, I have an orange tender sweet watermelon, which is actually vining out quite well, it's this healthy looking vine. I have some very small underdeveloped melons and a very small underdeveloped melon here. I'm not really sure what to do with those. This is the furthest I've ever gotten with squash or melons. I've, got, I've grown one butternut squash and one acorn squash before. And that's it. Some critter tried to get to this, but it's still alive. It's still kicking. Getting bigger every day. I'm gonna let it go. Well, I got one small pumpkin. But here is a really sad cuckozelle. I have two patty pan squashes right here. Those that are dying from powdery mildew are tigger melons. 
We got a really small one last year that I like desperately need to spray. Please. And then we have black popcorn, which must be ready because something's stolen one. So I think it's time to pick the other ones. I would prefer to leave them on here to dry, but if I'm going to fight wildlife, I'm not doing it. I'll just pick it. I'll let you know how they come out. Here I have a Chicago Hardy that I put in the ground. I'm fully ready to wrap it for the winter. This is a Texas Everbearing. I like to call it a Texas Never Bearing because I've never gotten one off of any of these in like seven years. This is a pink uh, seedless Reliance grape. It's its first year here. It's also struggling, so I'm trying to train it on this fence. This is my Fuyu persimmon, self pollinating, putting on a lot of new growth. I'm hoping it'll survive the winter. I got 10 yards of mulch, so see what happens. These bananas are on my murder list, though. <laughs> I've had them for so many years and I've not gotten one. So, they're either going to produce some bananas or they're going to die over winter. Trust me, I've had all of these for a long time. Right, girls? Yeah, we don't, we don't keep bananas if we don't get bananas. I'll keep you if you don't give me eggs, though. I haven't decided if I'll eat you or not. I probably will. But they just started laying within the last month. The ISA started laying about mid-July. And the Wyandots are just starting to lay. Meatball was first. And now Clyde, as of yesterday. And Bertha, who's right here in this corner. She's starting to do the squat. So I think she'll start laying in a couple weeks. Over here we have Pops. We haven't been able to give them the attention they deserve, but we'll get mulch. We'll get more water next year. We've just been so, so busy. So busy. These ones are doing the best. It's their first year, so there's that too. Um, I think Greg planted them, like right before we went on our honeymoon. At the, so that was like the last week of June that we left. So between last week of June and today, which is the last day of August, August 31st, 2021. They're still alive. They all got eaten nonstop by squirrels. So the fact that they have this much growth after getting eaten back by squirrels all summer is impressive. We did lose these two. I think these were Cascade hops. These ones are doing okay. Still alive. I think they'll be alive next year too. You can see we have it attached to our shed. Uh, we're not going to do that next year. He's going to get a pole put all the way up there. I'm optimistic. I think they're going to look good. Unfortunately, I can't show you the front garden. Um, so I want to respect my neighbor's privacy. But I will show you our back orchard. So this is a blushing star peach. This is the one I made all of that peach peel jelly and peach crisp with. And some of the peaches actually also went into a peach and pear butter that I made the other day, which just straight up tastes like fall, smells like fall. This is a Anjou pear. Uh, we got only one off of. This is a Macoon apple, which is a sweet apple. One that actually got eaten by wildlife early in the season, but I just wanted to see what would happen. You can see it's been, it's looked like that for like two months, but it, it did get to full size. Should get some more next year. The compost. Oops. All right, back to the strawberries. So we have a honey crisp apple tree. I have just like a sooty fungus on it when we wash them. They come out really good. They're just starting to ripen. 
So it looks good. And these strawberries. These are Bartlett pears that I've been collecting. Uh, <laughs> really don't want pears to ripen on the tree. So they ripen from the inside out. And I've been checking them every few days. And this here is a donut peach, which was just a stick when I planted it in the fall. And then I got eaten by Japanese beetles. They're still alive. We will also give this more care and attention. I've had a very, very busy summer. So there you have it. I have a mini homestead. I do have one type of animal. I do have fruits and vegetables and raised beds. They're looking really good. This is gonna be my project for the time being. I'll show you some more harvests as we go, plus what I'm gonna work on over the winter, including some mushroom farming, which is gonna be exciting. But otherwise, thanks for hanging out with me, checking out all my stuff. I got a lot of stuff here. There's only two people eating all this. Like, it's a lot of food for two people. Um, with that, I hope you have a good night. I'll put a new video next Tuesday. And if you go on my Instagram, the Galaxy Gardens, or my TikTok, you'll see some more updates there. All right. Bye.